Hello and welcome back to Coffee Shop Astrophysics Ast Extraterrestrial Talk Part 4. Almost got it. Uh, continuing on, so we've talked about how does life begin, how can we find um, primordial life, maybe how can we find uh, intelligent life and exoplanets and, and moving out of the galaxy, how can we contact potential intelligent civilizations and how can they find us, right? Well, we have made some attempts to send contact, but as Alex mentioned in the previous talk, um, we have a pretty pretty strict limitation on how far we can get, even if we're traveling at the fastest speed that we know of in the universe, the speed of light. Uh, it could still take way too long. So what have we done so far? So in 1974, uh, astronomers sent a broadcast out from... Arecibo Telescope in Puerto Rico. Uh, what what they sent was a binary code, um, and it, it included details of um, human DNA and, and chemical properties. I'll get to that in a second. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But we've also we so we did that, and we've also had our own radio broadcast bubble. Um, so we've been broadcasting radio, uh, just you know, audio signals and speech and stuff like that for a little longer. But then we've had uh, a television broadcast since about 1928. And so a big question that people ask and regularly is, uh, will aliens be able to watch like The Simpsons or I Dream of Genie uh, in space? Are they just kind of hanging out in a spaceship, like just like watching our old TV shows? Um, but we've kind of already talked about this. It, 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 sure, why not? It's possible like they could, if they're, if they know that The Simpsons is being broadcast into space, you could go and find the signal and get rid of all the background noise and then amplify the signal and maybe watch, you know, like a Treehouse of Horrors or something. I don't, I don't know what it would be. Um, but yeah, so the idea is that the signal is going to be weak. So even if we're streaming um, old, old episodes of Leave it to Beaver or something, it's just going to be really hard to see. Um, we've also sent a Beatles song uh, called Across the Universe. We've beamed that directly at Polaris, and that was done in celebration of NASA's 50th anniversary of existing. And that was done in 2008. So we also, one more thing that we've done is we've sent Voyager missions. We have these two probes that we've sent out and that started in 1977. And they've been traveling for, I believe, about 40, 40 some years, right? And so I'll talk a little bit more about those in just a second. Um, those are super interesting and they actually have been really essential for a lot of science um, of our solar system and beyond. So, going back to the Arecibo message, uh, it was sent out. Frank Drake actually uh, composed this message, the same Frank Drake that made the uh, Drake equation that we talked about earlier. And so, this is the binary code. This is the actual binary code that was sent out. And... Um, it doesn't look like much, but it's a bunch of ones and zeros, but I, it would be the same if you broke down everything that was going on in your computer, right? Like it doesn't, but what's hidden in this image is really what's interesting about it. It's not obviously the n ones and zeros. So in the image itself, we have numbers one through 10. So it's in groups of seven, there are seven groups here and it reads uh, horizontally, right? The original message doesn't have color information. It just has the binary information. Um, someone actually broke this down in, uh, into an audio format as well. It sounded kind of like just like a blippy sine wave. But anyway, so we have the numbers 1 through 10. We have atomic numbers for hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus. Um, we have different formulae for chemical compounds found in human DNA. And we also have information contained here about the structure, the helix structure of DNA. We have average human height and we have the population size at the time, and that was 1977. We have here on this row where it's yellow, we, this is a schematic of our solar system. We have the sun, we have Mercury, Venus, and Earth is the one, the little yellow dot that's kind of just sticking up where the person is to indicate that humans live on the third planet from the sun. We also have the diameter of the Arecibo telescope that's a really interesting thing that happened. Uh, they, they weren't super hopeful that uh, an alien civilization would find the message and come back, but it was, 
it was a really useful experiment in learning about the challenges of sending messages into space to contact other civilizations. So it was an important experiment nonetheless. So going back to the Voyager missions. Um, so on there were two probes, and they were sent almost at the same time um, within the year of 1977. And so what they've done is they've gone past... So now we have images of all four of the gas giants, which is a really big deal. Right now, they are actually uh, exiting the heliosphere. Uh, one of them's actually already gone. Not gone, gone. It's past the heliosphere. And so it's still transmitting data. But um, So they're gradually losing power. Uh, we expect that they will no longer be able to transmit data after 2025 and engineering data so uh, data about the actual operations of the probes will probably end around 2036 okay um so that's all super interesting and really uh, essential also what is unique about this probe is that we have a record um so on the right there's this color right you have this um, gold colored cover and it contains information um, about the pulsar system that we actually are surrounded by. So in the center of these like sort of asterisks looking thing, that's Earth. And then there are there are regular pulsars that surround it. And it, within each of those lines, there's actually um, binary information that represents the period of each of the pulsars so you can figure out which one they are. So that's super interesting. So that's actually a map that serves as a star map for anyone that finds the record, if it's like an alien, hey, he picks up the map, looks at it. Oh, this is uh, this is Earth, so they can come find us, and so that's pretty unique. And also on the record, they have uh, they have sounds of humans talking, and they have encoded images of people like just doing regular human things, like being at the supermarket and um, nursing babies and s stuff like that. And there's there's music, and there are I don't remember the actual selection of songs, but. Either way, it's a really fascinating experiment, and that's another attempt at contact that we've made. Um, so this is just a quick image to show you uh, sort of the structure of the solar system and where Voyager 2 is, specifically Voyager 2. Um, Voyager 1 is expected to reach the Oort cloud. Voyager 1 is not on this diagram, but if you look, at, it's roughly in the same sort of radius as where Voyager 2 is. But Voyager 1 is expected to reach the Oort cloud in about 21 years, and then it's 14 million miles from Earth right now. Uh, they've, they've both been traveling for around 43 years and uh, around 39,000 miles per hour, which is pretty fascinating. And then so if you look over here at Ross 248, that's expected, uh, Voyager 2 is expected to get there in about 40,000 years. <laughs> so... Maybe, maybe there's something there and they'll find our probe. Anyway, will, will they ever see any of our signals and do they exist? Are aliens going to come find us? Thanks for joining our talk. Uh, thank you very much to Alex for doing half of it. And um, we hope to see you on our next one.